What's up glue sniffers? Here I am again. Today we are going to build this oldie but goldie kit from Tamiya, because we need a vehicle to put on our desert diorama scene. If you miss this, you should check it. I have the Edward Photo Edge set, it will be the first time for me, so I am a little scared. And there are also two options for the tracks. The free old model ones and some plastic ones from Bronco. We will see in the end. So, today it will be all about steel textures, welding and photo etched parts in order to give this old 1971 kit a decent modern look. Let's see how it went. I was thinking about a straight out of the box build for the first tank on the channel, but maybe a nice modern kit would be a better choice in place of this one. So let's leave the standard building procedures for another time, ok? Like my friend used to say, laziness is the mother of all inventions. And here you can see it in practice. I built myself a rotary sanding machine for the wheels. Simply use low RPMs or the plastic will melt. In no time all the wheels were sanded and now it was time to give the rubber parts some damage. I just used the scalpel to do some destruction. In the end I smoothed them with Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. Here we have the turret. I began with it because it's small, but we must complete all of the upgrading steps on it. Let's start with the steel texture. I kind of got used to using Mr. Surfacer 500 and Acetone for the texturing. Just put some putty in a metal tray, add some Acetone and mix the thing. You must do some experiments to find the right consistency. And then you start to stipple it on the surface. The effect is controlled by how thin is the mix, how much of it you put on, how long you stipple it and how many times you repeat the applications. Those pincers had nice steel plates, so I used a thin mix, a little of it, not much stippling and I just applied it once. This step is here just to give some difference between thick and thin plates on the tank. You can also see that I was avoiding the corners where the wells will be done. When it's dry, just take a fine sanding sponge and smooth the rough spots. Don't put too much pressure on it. Go easy and you will end up with a nice result. Ok, now let's make some of those nice welds on the other part. It's kind of easy. Just take a sharp hobby knife and start making little cuts on the edge. Then you can turn the piece around and do the same. If the blade is sharp, as it should be, just a little pressure is needed. It is probably exaggerated a little bit, but I want it to give an interesting look to an otherwise boring turret. Again, the glue is used to lightly melt the rough spots and make the effect smoother. For the big welds I used Tamiya 2 part epoxy quick type. Reference pictures were used to see where to those should go. Be sure to mix it properly. You have to make a nice even worm by rolling the paddy between two pieces of styrene. Wet the sheets in order to prevent sticking. Then take the putty and put it in place. You must push it into the place a little, but don't smash it. If the toothpick is wet, it won't stick to the putty. Cut away the excess. Now it's time to make the sculpting. This is a homemade tool made from a toothpick and a piece of soda can. Just make small indentations in order to shape the weld. And this is pretty much it. 
I will kindly ask you to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget the bell icon if you find the content interesting. It helps me a lot. Some ordinary building is more than welcome from time to time. Now you can see the difference between the steel plate and those covers. And now the fun part begins. Photo etched parts. And of course I started with the complicated ones. Lifting hooks. You have to make three bends on those little buggers. I was using tweezers and fingers for the first bend. At the end the razor blade for the other two. In the meantime I lost one, but I found it, two hours later in my foot, because it was hurting like hell when I was walking. Beautiful modeling time, what can I say? I marked the place where those two should go. I used Tarbond Black Medium CA glue. It has a rubber component in it, so the bond is strong but elastic. Here is my homemade applicator. I have two dedicated videos about CA glue on the channel. They are full of tips and you will be laughing because of the way I was talking and filming at the time. A must see. When you put the part on the glue, you have a few seconds to put it in position. And here they are. Time to clean the excess. I used Starbond debonder for this. It is a thick gel, but it works fine. Just start the cleaning immediately after the piece is blocked. You can remove the excess gel with some water. And here we go. Nice and clean. Let's drill those guns to upgrade them. Nothing special here. Let me tell you a secret. I always drill those holes of camera and then I insert the drill and start filming, but psst. The truth is that I didn't glue them at the time because I was hoping to find metal ones. Uber makes a fantastic kit, but I didn't find it in time. So here is our upgraded turret. Let's move to the main part. You have to erase some details in order to make room for photo etched parts. And here the right part is done. Edward's instructions are clear. The main tool was this chisel from Tamiya. Actually it is an Alpha product and those are among the best. Like I've said a hundred times, don't save your money on blades. Just start to remove parts carefully and try not to hit other parts. Try to do the best job you can. It will result in less sanding later. It's time for my Patreon commercial. If you really like my work, you can join my Patreon team. It only costs 4.5 euro per month and you will get a lot for this money. You can ask me anything, I will be your personal modeling tutor, you can post your work in the Patreon group and you can help shape this channel with your wishes. A big thank you to all of my Patreons. You are the best. The grills were removed with cutters and a hobby blade. Again, try to do the cleanest job you can. Now for the sanding. You should use different grades of sanding sticks and gradually progress to the final ones. For me, this is the worst part because the model looks like a mess and I always think that all this mess will be visible in the end. But you will see that it gets better than that. I also engraved some lines, so that those boxes don't look fused together with the hull. It's time for some more welding. The process is the same as for the turret. When I was looking for reference photos, I thought that those German-made tanks were all the same. We are Germans, we have plans and drawings and we do everything the same, for example. But I was surprised. In terms of small details, no two of them were alike. So, whatever you do will be plausible. But don't exaggerate. When you are texturing with Mr. Surfacer and Acetone, you may encounter a problem. 
The acetone evaporates quickly and the mixture can quickly become too thick. No worries, just add some acetone and mix it again. And this can also be another parameter to control the effect. Some of the pieces can be textured off the model. That way you can work around those details easier. If you hit some unwanted spots, you can simply scrape away the texture when it's dry. An interesting spot. We have a thick textured plate, a thin clean plate and in the middle there is this thick weld. I think that this will look nice in the end. Some big photo edge parts this time. I wanted those fenders to be properly glued, so I used plenty of glue. If you put the glue on a piece of masking tape it will stay useful for at least an hour. Then you should get a new one because it is losing its power. I discovered that you can clean away excess glue with acetone. Just unload the brush so you don't flood the surface. This time no water was needed. Another advantage of using black glue. It's black. Whoa, what a discovery. It means that you can easily see it. For the fenders you can start with the straight part. When you have cleaned the excess and the part is fixed, you can move to the curved part. You should find the best approach for every part. Those hinges for example were bent to 90 degrees and glued in place. When they were dry, the other bend was made on the spot. If you use too little glue, the part will not be glued properly. It is better to apply more of it and clean the excess with acetone. Warning: Acetone may melt the plastic. However, if you work quickly enough, only a small amount of fog on the surface will appear. If you know at the bonder that it's not like thick gel, let me know in the comments, I'm all ears. The exhaust was textured, the pipe was drilled out and the cover plate was applied. I really like this detail. I'm excited to give it a nice rusty paint job. And the texture will certainly help. For cutting photo etched parts I use this piece of black plexiglass. You need a stiff surface that will not ruin your blade. And it should be black so you can see your parts easily. Just make a cut as close to the part as you can. The excess on the larger parts can be cut away. I think I need a good photo etched file. All suggestions are welcome. You can use the bending station for the bigger parts. I am still not sure how to use it so I won't say much about it. At the end some finger work is always needed. I also tried soldering. Well, I was happy for the first try. I didn't film the process because it was chaotic enough without it. And soldering paste is a must have. Here are the results. In this video I only address the tank parts. I had a plan to make some interesting stowage but I ran out of time. My kids were sick at home and the workbench time was not ideal. And if you are not sure about investing time and money in photo etched parts, just look at this one. I think that is money and time well spent. And here we have our little panzer with all of his shiny parts. Finally we can move to the tracks. I decided to use bronco plastic ones because I never used them, so uh, let's try something new kind of decision. And while I was happily building them I discovered that they were meant for an early version of Panzer II and not for me. So I will try to put the Friul model ones together during the holidays. So here it is with those beautiful rubber tracks. I'm sorry for that, I hope you understand. I hope that you find this video interesting and useful. Tell me what you think in the comments. The next two videos will be full builds of my first two dioramas, 
so you will have something to watch and I can have some holidays with my family. That means I am speaking to you for the last time this year, so allow me to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Ho ho ho! Next year we will start with some stowage for this beauty. Until then, stay cool, stay healthy and put some glue on the styrene too, if you know what I mean. Bye!